now on News Talk 105.9 WMAL. O'Connor and Company. 507 Auto Cutter and Company on this spooky, spooky morning. It's Halloween, so people are going to act stupid all day. <laughs> Drives me nuts. <laughs> and they're going to try to scare you. They're going to dress in silly costumes around the office. Can we do that? We're not sure. trying. Well, you're you're replete, replend, resplendent. What's the word I'm looking that's, for? That's it. That's it. Not replete. You're not replete. I mean, you could be replete if you'd like. But I don't even me. think that works. You're resplendent in your black and orange. I am. You look fabulous. Thank you. Happy Halloween to you. Happy Halloween. Don't scare me. I don't like being scared. <laughs> uh, you know who's scary? The Southern Poverty Law Center. Oh, always. Tyler O'Neill literally wrote the book on him, and at 6.05, he'll join us. The new smear campaign against Mike Johnson. 7.05, Dan Hoffman, three-time CIA station chief, give us his inside info on what's going on in Israel right now. 7.15, Gabe Kaminsky, investigative reporter at The Examiner. Uh, 735, Ian Lovejoy running for the House of Delegates. That's a great name, mm. Ian Lovejoy. It is. Yeah. Nice. I mean, it sort of sounds like, well, never mind. At 805, Gloria Mercer is going to join us with the, uh, <clears throat> now she's a paranormal person. She talks to ghosts. She's a ghostbuster is what she is. And she's going to she's gonna tell us about ghosts because it's Halloween. Okay, that's super cool. Happy, happy Halloween. That is cool. And at 835, Puneet Alualia. 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 Well yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, Republican nominee for Fairfax County Board of Supervisors joining us at 835 because it's election season. You were one week away from election day in Virginia. I know. I know. Right? Although really voting started, you know, right. 35 days ago. <laughs> right. But um, But we're one week away from the final day, which is now considered election day. Right. So that's that's nothing to be scared about there. We're going full force into Election Day. We're excited about that. That's right. So do you still acknowledge how, – how, let me rephrase the question because I know the answer. Obviously you do. You're Julie Gunlock. <laughs> you live in Alexandria. you got to do the Halloween thing. Well, of how, course. So how do you do Halloween? Like, for instance, at this moment, are there giant fake spiders crawling up the side of your house? No, I'm very subtle. Okay. Although my annoying neighbor did – has the whole like you know light display and oh yeah sort of Christmas lights in the bushes that were literally thrown on there. Um, so I'm not thrilled with that. But no, I unless they listen to the program this morning I and then do, we, we love you. Very I do much. a very small skeleton. Yeah, and I do a lot of mums. Is it a real skeleton? Is it human bones? It, yes, absolutely, Excellent. absolutely. Yes. It's a tiny, tiny little pygmy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, no, mine are more subtle. But uh, but yeah, we I. I still have a trick or treater, and I make a big thing of chili, and you know, kids are. You in give and kids out. chili as no, they no, come no, by. The Doesn't family, that get all the over the? Come, no, no, oh. you come in, and I have all the fixes. It's like you'd be there with chili. a ladle yeah. as they open up the little knapsack. Here you go. <laughs> make your hands a cup. Here's some scalding chili. Chili. So you um, make chili for the for the for the boys well, and yeah, your husband, yeah, and, and and do they participate in giving out the candy? Yes. Like when the doorbell but, rings, do they? No, run? but I've told this story before, yeah. as you recall. We live on a very busy street, and so nobody comes on our street to trick or treat, oh, right? Yes. And you remember, I, your husband needed to get some customers. <laughs> yes, my yeah. husband. We had we we both separately lived on Capitol Hill, but Capitol Hill was such a fun place yeah. to give out candy. It's just, I mean, just thousands of people, and we loved it. We loved giving out candy, and then we moved to Alexandria. We live on a busy road. Nobody goes on our street because it's too bit. There's too much traffic, and so. He was at the back door, and he saw some kids walking by, and he screamed, kids, come here. I have candy. And I remember, I mean, this happened many, many years ago, and I remember I ran to the back, this was in the back door, and he's screaming this at these little kids, and I said, don't do that. Don't do that. That looks predatory. <laughs> and, and so every year, I sort of make fun of him for that. But we've kind of, so we don't give out a lot of candy. Yeah. Uh, but we wander around and walk around. And oh, you 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 bring the mountain to Muhammad. You go out we, there with we, your candy. And we see. sometimes just walk around a well, little bit fun. and see the kids and, yeah, see the neighbors and, you know, the few we talk to. Chief librarian <laughs> for the uh, Alexandria Public School System sits in the back porch like that, starts yelling, hey, kids, want to get some books? <laughs> you want some porn? Hey, kids, yeah. here's hey, some porn. Hey, here's some fun picture books. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, that's, so that's scary. What, you, do you get trick or treaters? We do get trick or treaters. Although it, it's we bounce back and forth. Sometimes we have a lot of obligations and things we're doing that we we have nothing scheduled tonight. Nice. So I'm going to have to do something. I didn't get any candy. I got to. I okay. got to. Well, I'll pick CBS some up on the, on the yeah, way home. On the way home. 
and I'll get some. Can, it, I, can I tell you, back. I still have, in fact, they might be right next to my door still, <laughs> a, a bowl of Tootsie Rolls from last year. Oh, that's nice. Refresh them. I know. Well, we won't, we're not going to pass out old candy, Good. but I'm just saying Good. that's, this is how we are. It's like, oh, right, let's, and we got, why did we even get Tootsie Rolls? Who let, you are you going to, are any? Oh, well, I'll tell you why we got Tootsie Rolls, because I specifically said to Meredith, get something that I'm not going to want to eat. Ah, uh, smart. For yes. the next two months. And there it is. It's still sitting there. Don't get anything with peanut butter. Why not? Cause oh, because I want to eat it. Eat That's them. true. That's oh. true. So we will be handing out. Okay, we, we're on a, we're a corner house, but it's not a busy street. Although it's a little, it's kind of a dark street. Mm. And if I were, and we don't have sidewalks in our neighborhood. That's right. That's right. Um, but it's still pretty fun. Yeah. But, and, and I think the weather's going to be nice. It was drizzly this morning when we were leaving, but I think it's, I think the rain will clear up by, by the time we're, yeah, we're it's giving things to be out. Good. Apparently, candy corn is getting controversial, really getting attacked this year for I some reason. Do you don't you? like candy corn? No, no. What camp are you in? Uh, well, see, I th- by the way, before I answer your question, candy co- there's one state in the union that has rated candy corn as actually the most popular candy, no. and that's Virginia. What? Virginia loves their candy corn. It's an awful candy. And so I, I don't want to alienate our listeners, our, our family in the Commonwealth. And actually, I don't see. I'm not, and that's why I'm hesitating. I would not say it's awful. I will. You put candy corn in front of me, and I've got a sweet tooth. I'll eat oh, that I candy corn. Eat, I would never. Oh, eat. I like candy. Corn, I like candy but corn. I don't only, go out of my way for candy corn. I don't mind a candy corn used as a garnish, <laughs> like on top of a cupcake. Just it's for cute. a look. Although but you, you still throw it away. You, you throw them away. Yeah, uh-huh. It's just for the yeah, look. They go in the wrapper. It took me forever to realize what the hell it was. When there's a candy corn, I was like, that looks nothing like corn. But then I realized it's the kernel. It's like in the Orange and white part is the root going into the cob. There you Somebody go. should like it should they should deliver it like that. If they actually if you bought it in the store like a cob and all those things were like stuck inside <laughs> it, I know that would be labor intensive. Yeah, a little but bit. But that would make it a little more fun to eat, right? I guess it's weird, but I don't. So I'm fine with candy corn, but what, apparently what is, over the last child, couple of years, hmm? as a child, what I did ate you, candy corn as a child. Well, I'm sure. As a child, what was your least favorite candy to get or thing to get? You now get and laters. Little... Now and laters. Oh. Because you couldn't eat it now or well, later. Now... They're like <laughs> super duper hard, like like a rock. Um, oh, okay. Sweet tarts. Mm. No, not sweet tarts. Starburst. They're like a super hard Starburst. It was I didn't understand. You're supposed to suck on it. I don't like sucking candy. Yeah, no, no. I I want to get right chew. to it. Yeah. yeah, like if you give me a roll of lifesavers, you know how you're supposed to suck. Yeah, chew, I will. I, I will chew. crunch so and I. swallow a roll of and lifesavers stuck in, your teeth in all day. two minutes. Yep. Absolutely, mm-hmm. but they're gone. Um, candy corn. For some reason, though, there's been this resurgence of hatred toward candy corn. Yeah, there seems. And to be there's some story emotion. after story after story about how no one likes candy corn, and I I defy that. I think that people do like candy corn. I think it's just become a trend to hate on it. I think it's a it's a a desperation candy. It's like if there's nothing else available, you'll eat the candy corn. Believe it or not, Americans are absolutely in love with chocolate though. Well, on course, a ratio yeah. of 2 to 1, Americans are buying chocolate of or chocolate and milk derived. Chocolate. Yeah. Milk. Well, I mean, I, I love me some Hershey's. We have, every year our family would go to Hershey's, uh, the pilgrimage to the Chocolate Town, and then to the um, to the amusement park. I feel like one sign that you've sort of made it financially mm. is when you give out big candy bars. Yeah, the whole candy bars. Yeah, when well, you can get them pretty cheap at Costco now, especially if you know you're only going to get like thirty. Yeah. Trick or treaters. That's true. That is, it's indulgent. And suddenly you're that house. But see, yeah. the problem is next year you'll have three hundred people. Right. At your door because word That's gets what my out husband fast. Needs to do. That's right, <laughs> and the porn, the free porn, always <laughs> works. What? It's a very important book that every child should read. That's just the public schools. It's five fifteen. WMAL traffic and weather every ten minutes. First on the fives. Oh, I stand corrected. Apparently, Butterfinger is the most popular candy in Virginia. Thank I goodness. apologize. Thank goodness. Butterfinger. That's Virginia also is off saved. the beaten path, That's though, a isn't delicious it? candy. It's a fine candy. It's a fine candy. Jamie Witten's in the Hadid Carpet Cleaning Traffic Center. Where do you stand on candy corn, Jamie? You know, I'm so stuck on you having Tootsie Rolls. <laughs> that... I know. I know. I can't believe I did that. It's all that was left. We bought yeah. it day of. That's so wrong. It is. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> All right. Nothing too scary on our Halloween morning. And- cool content from your favorite WMAL shows. Download the new WMAL app today. Virginians, by a huge margin, 
buy more candy corn than any other state. Is the entire show going to be about candy corn today? You brought it up. Didn't you? No. Well, well, yes, it is. The entire show is going to be about candy corn. Apparently, Hunter Biden snorts candy corn. <laughs> Way to stretch it. Nice. <laughs> um, so yesterday at the White House, they were doing... Oh, hold on. Hang on. So Maine... Oh, no. Maryland, number one is Hershey's Kisses. Aw. That's cute. And then Hershey's Mini Bars. And then Reese's... All three are Hershey derivatives. Well, Maryland does border Pennsylvania. Yeah. It's, it's a very short drive. To Hershey, Virginia. Number one is Butterfinger. Number I two, like that. yeah, I like Butterfinger. M and M's, of course, and I, I think M M&M and M Mars is in Virginia, is aren't they? I think hmm. they are. And hot tamales. I don't hot like tamales. Yeah, I'm not a big oh, hot tamale guy. I That's do like cinnamon, right? Yeah, intense cinnamon. But although those candy, I do like a good gummy. I, I like chewy candies like oh, that. My friend is um, what's that? Mike um, and Ike. No, no. No, I can't stand Mike and Ike. Why? Why? Mike and Ike's are great. That's the fruity version of hot tamales. It's Um, basically hot tamales, but from, you know, San Francisco. My favorite is Reason. Do you know Reason? Robbie Suave and the the Libertarians have candy? (laughs) What? No. What's Reason? It's like R-E-I-S-E-N, Reason. That would be resin. It's it's not resin. (laughs) Well, okay. Well, I don't know this candy. Okay, well, it's it's like a super hard, chewy... Center is it like a resin like, with like a dark chocolate outside? Oh, I can't believe you've never had this. Never I'm gonna have to bring this into you. Uh, it's, the, it's a gummy version of chocolate, okay. essentially. So, uh, it takes a lot of work. Gotta really see. I don't like things that take a lot of work. I lose oh. fillings, <laughs> I don't need that in my life. I have uh, no fillings. District of Columbia, I don't. Well, District of Columbia, number one, MMs, number two, Tootsie Pops. Mm. I do like Tootsie Pops, but again, I'm that owl. Three, I'm like crunching <laughs> right down. <laughs> Um, and then number three is blow pops. Mm. Hmm. Mm. Is it maybe that might have been there. that might have been during the Clinton administration where that gained popularity? <laughs> I knew you could do it. Thank you. Uh, last night at the White House, the president and first lady did the traditional White House trick or treating. Um, the first lady was dressed as a kitty cat, Ugh. and the president was dressed as Joe Biden. Why would the why would she get dressed up and he, he was doesn't? Eating a fake ice cream cone. Yeah, Candy. somebody came by with ice, and he started mm. licking on a fake ice cream oh, cone from one of the kids that had like was like a candy salesman. He was also sick. He was constantly coughing into it. So here, here was the move. He's got the basket of candy in his left hand. Mm-hmm. He the kid comes up in his right. He makes a fist in his right hand and goes right. <laughs> yes, and Very coughs flemmy. right into the hand, and then with that right hand reaches in to the basket of candy covered with his presidential mucus. And then oh. hands it to the kid. Ugh. And then the kid walks away and the hazmat team tackles the kid to the ground <laughs> and steals the candy and detoxes the kid. Right. But it was constant on the video. Yes. There's yes. also another video where two girls are coming up to him to say hi to the president. And he reaches out his arms like he's going to embrace these two girls. And Dr. Jill, EDD, uh, runs in there and intervenes and, like, you know, coaxes the girls away from the presidential predator. To stand for a picture, and he looks lost. Oh well, yeah, he looks completely there confused. There were several clips of that of him looking completely confused. You know what I found the most galling mm. is that the decorations included a cardboard cutout of Commander, <laughs> the killer dog, the like, poor neglected killer. Are you sure, it was a dog, Cujo? attack dog. Yeah. It was- uh, well, yeah. that's because the, the the White House staff was like, we have to put really scary things up there right, for good decorations. Point. Good point. And they're like, well, I know what I'm scared know, of. Yeah. I'm scared of that yeah. damn dog. That was designed to scare the Secret Service away. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and you know, but there is something weird about that. They put a cardboard cutout of Commander like he's still a part of the family. He's gone to that farm. You know right. he has. Commander, the 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 bloodthirsty killer dog, <laughs> gets more recognition than than their granddaughter. Good point. Navy. Mm-hmm. It's 523. Now on News Talk 105.9 WMAL. O'Connor and Company. Meredith and I were supposed to go to a Halloween costume party over the weekend, and we were thinking of going as Cinderella and Prince Charming. Aww. Because she's she kind of looks like Cinderella. Sure, if you think yeah. About it. The, like the original yeah. non-wokeified Cinderella, right? <laughs> right? So I'm like looking for, if you search for Cinderella costume, you get a bunch of things for little six-year-old girls. So I do a Google search, Cinderella costume adult. 
Oh boy. Oh dear. No, 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 no. no oh, no. what uh-uh. came back was not anything that my fairy godmother would want to see. <laughs> Oh, it was not, don't, mm. No, you have to like go on eBay and find some vintage Cinderella costume from the 50s. What to... are people doing out there in oh, their I, costumes? Uh, co- costumes have gotten ridiculous. Oh, it it look... is hard to find a non-sexy women's oh, costume. Oh, these were explicit. It looked yeah. like something you would see at the Fairfax County School Library. Yeah, yeah. It's... It was... <laughs> It's really a bit much. adult oriented, and they'll take they'll take perfectly innocent characters oh, yes. and turn them into sex. Incredibly objects. innocent. Sorry. Yes. yes. No, you're right. It's just something that I really appreciate. All right. Uh, out of Israel now. Uh, there's an exchange here with our friend James Rosen from Newsmax on something that's incredibly important. You know, we don't really hear much about the hostages. Yeah. They continue to, you know, all this talk, ceasefire, ceasefire, ceasefire. Hey, how about you release hostages? Nothing that is happening has to happen if, right. if they would release the hostages. So, I mean, we've already discussed this during our pre-show meeting, but I'll just, off the top of your head, how many Americans are being held right I now? I don't know. Not really, no. And and so I thought it was 12 mm-hmm. uh, going in, and I feel like I'm pretty plugged into the news. James Rosen asked the question yesterday to J- uh, John Kirby, and he got a less than complete answer. Mm-hmm. How many Americans have you confirmed in that time are actually hostages? Less than 10. That's not a number. I want a number from you. Less than 10. Why can't you give a number? James, I've given you an answer. What's your next question? You've given an answer. You haven't been responsive. Let the record show. What's going on here? That, That James is right. That's not an answer. How less than 10 is not an answer to how many. So it's nine. You know, I just don't it's trust. It's eight. It's yeah. two. And why Why not give the answer? Well, it's because they don't want this to become a news story. That's right. They don't want the daily tick of, you know, 12 days since 10 Americans have been held hostage. Well, and I've seen I've seen some excuses out there um, over the last couple of days. Well, there's negotiations. That's baloney. So what? But also, Hamas is not negotiating. Right. Right. I mean, let's... I, as and, if. and by the way, we don't negotiate with terrorists. Right. That's America's right. set in right. stone but they, policy. But I have seen them saying, well, there's there's some very high level conversations going on and we don't want anything. How is telling the American public the number of Americans that are still being held, held for Hamas? A number. Oh, a number. I have an answer to that. How, how is that going to screw up the negotiations? Because it's going to put right. more pressure right. Right. on American exactly. Uh, the, the Biden administration to do something about right. it. As long as it's like ambiguous, again, it's a thing, it's just out there and sort of ethereal, then there's no pressure on them to fix the problem. But again, they are using the excuse that, you know, this is just something we can't talk about, you people can't know about because, you know, it's complicated mm. and there's, you know, discussions going on. We have to keep everything very secret Santa over here. Because How many Americans have you confirmed in that time are actually hostages. Less than 10. That's not a number. <laughs> I want a number from you. Less than 10. Why can't you give a number? James, I've given you an answer. What's your next question? It's not an answer. It's not an answer. Less than 10. Um, so this is the problem with John Kirby. The Kirby giveth, the Kirby taketh away. Yesterday we had some modicum of praise for him for actually... Uh, smacking back at a reporter who was uh, saying, shouldn't you apologize for saying that people are going to die in war? And, yeah. and now today he's right back yeah. to this. Isn't it inhumane? And he was like, you want to talk about inhumane? Right. Yeah, great moments, but you're right. Then he goes back to his regular mm-hmm. frustrating narrative. Uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, on the other hand, he doesn't pussyfoot around. He gives a daily press briefing now uh, during the course of this war, and he takes all questions and gives pretty straightforward answers. He was asked specifically about a ceasefire and whether there is a likelihood of ceasefire. And he said in no uncertain terms, Israel, I'm quoting him now, Israel will not agree to a cessation of hostilities after the horrific acts of October 7th. Calls for a ceasefire are a call for Israel to surrender to Hamas, to surrender to terror, to surrender to barbarism. That will not happen. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says that there is a time for peace and a time for war and this is a time for war. And 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 I will add to that, you want a ceasefire? So do we. In fact, we had a ceasefire right up until October 7th. 
Hamas broke the ceasefire. You got a problem with the fact that we're at war right now? You should be talking to Hamas. People are saying, why isn't there any discussion of all of the children who have been killed in retaliation in in oh, Gaza? Yeah. And and my answer is, oh my gosh, it's horrible. Why did Hamas do right. this to why them? Why is there no discussion of the fact that Hamas has created a situation where kill, kids are killed in, in Gaza? That's right. You know, Netanyahu, Netanyahu also said the horrors that Hamas perpetrated on, on October 7th remind us that we will not realize the promise of a better future unless we, the civilized world, are willing to fight the barbarians. Remember it's that. It's that simple. Remember, it is that simple. This is not complicated. This is not hard. Remember never again. Mm. Remember that. If these liberals could think back five minutes ago when we were all saying never again, never again, apparently they didn't mean it. Apparently, it's okay. We've got a little bit more, uh, and specifically about how the media continues to uh, try to slant their coverage in favor of the Hamas terrorists and other disturbing signs of anti-Semitism here in America. Coming up in a moment, right. Julie, one of the big questions on everyone's mind within hours after the horrific attacks of October 7th was, how did this happen? How did uh, Mossad and the Israeli intelligence, which is always sort of heralded as one of the finest in the world— how did they miss this? How did they not know this happened? Uh, the New York Times has a, a bit of a deep dive into this. And again, it is the New York Times. So, you know, take it with a bit exactly. of a grain of salt. But they also do have some good reporters, international reporters, who do have pretty good sources. Um, apparently, at 3 a.m. on October 7th, uh, the head of Israel's domestic security service saw what looked like a military exercise being orchestrated and set up by Hamas in the middle of the night. This is leading up to the actual attacks. Uh, at the offices, officials had spent hours monitoring the Hamas activity in the Gaza Strip, says the New York Times, which was unusually active for the middle of the night. Mm. Get this. Israeli intelligence and national security officials who had convinced themselves that Hamas had no interest in going to war— initially assumed it was just a nighttime exercise. Wow. It turns out it was the plan being put into action. They saw it happening, oh. but they but they were convinced that Hamas had no interest in going to war. And part of this, I think, is because of this narrative that we've seen from left-wing progressive diplomats who have sort of dominated the conversation about this, that, you know, listen, they just want to live in peace. and they That's just wanna, right. And, and that Israel was the problem, and if Israel would just give them what they want, everything would be fine. And even that thought process infiltrated the vaunted Israeli security forces. Well, and, well, I guess they know better now. We we sometimes forget that Israel was dealing with uh, a lot of p- internal political drama and turmoil on yeah. their own. Right now, they are very much— uh, right. Uh, unified. One, unified. No, but you're they, right. They were. It, it was, was a terrible situation. I mean, people were talking about civil war and, in and, Israel. And, well, and one of the leading voices constantly saying Israel must be on its guard at all times is Benjamin Netanyahu. Yes. And since he had been targeted politically, I think that people were like, well, you know, Netanyahu's wrong about these things, and so therefore he's probably wrong about that too. And oh, Bibi, just sit down. Oh, that you're you're an old man of the past. You don't know what it's 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 like Churchill warning yeah. about Nazis there, in Europe. There is something particularly bizarre about the story about what happened on October seventh because the very people who were targeted and killed and murdered and raped and beheaded. Uh, were the very people who were probably the most critical of Netanyahu um, and critical of Israel in general and Mm -hmm. were the people sort of working for uh, a better life for the people in Gaza. Um, And so it it really has, uh, I think, I think it's reawakened a lot of Israelis to the dangers that they face um, by Hamas. Uh, Yeah. Well, there's going to be continued um, exposés on exactly what went wrong there, but this actually appears to be a pretty well-documented and researched uh, discussion of that very thing. Now, um, one other part of the story that needs to be uh, shared, and that has to do (laughs) with Iran's part of this. You know, we keep hearing from the Biden administration the same message over and over again with regard to Iran. What's the message to Iran? Don't. As President Biden said, just don't. Exactly. One word. Pretty straightforward. Yeah, pretty straightforward. Uh, Pretty straightforward, yeah. And, of course, we heard Biden do the same thing. What's your message around don't? Don't. Well, 
You know, I love that message because they did. Exactly. They did. That's what we're learning now um, after hearing that over and over again. Don't, don't, don't. The fact is they've already done. Uh, U.S. uh, targets in Syria and Iraq had been attacked at least 23 times in the past two weeks, according to the Pentagon now, they're telling us. And this comes from various terrorist groups that are directly supported by Iran and the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. So all of this, you know, pretending to be firm and saying, oh, Steely, I don't, don't. What are you talking about? They're doing it it. as we speak. We need to move past the don't. You should have, the the, the don't should have been a couple years ago. Well, and also, can I just, I'm just so tired of people who can't communicate ideas. You know, when you when you want to be president, part of the job is to 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 stand for something. Tell us what you stand for and keep repeating it over and over. I, say what you will. George W. Bush. I know they, he wasn't articulate and he mangled his speech. He was really good at laying out who the bad guys were after we got attacked and what our position was. Right. Joe Biden. I mean, don't. Yeah, I'm a mullah over in Iran. And he says, what is what does he mean by don't you mean? Don't worry. We won't do anything. You know, don't don't mind us. Go ahead and send drone attacks over. Don't don't worry about any concerns. You're still going to get your six billion dollars. Don't needs to be followed up with something. Also, by saying don't, it sounds like you're talking to a rational actor who will uh, actually take your advice and don't do whatever Joe Biden doesn't want you to do. These are these are barbarians. They don't. They're not going to listen to Joe Biden saying don't. U.S. bases have been attacked 24 Mm -hmm. times with American injuries, by the way. American military personnel are suffering injuries as we speak because of these acts of war. Which we were not told. We were not told. And they still don't talk about it. Uh, Coming up at 7.05, Dan Hoffman, three-time CIA station chief uh, and also senior executive of clandestine services. He will... uh, yeah, clandestine. You like that? What are you, British? He's a spy. It's clandestine. A clandestine. And also oregano. No, how do you say and aluminum? Aluminium. No. Uh- <laughs> it's it's five fifty. So weird.